Hey everybody, and welcome to Comics from the Future. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is our big show where we show you some of the biggest and best books that you can pre-order by this weekend when you head over to infinityflux.net. So you can follow along right now. Everything you pre-order, you get 10% off of. So you don't want to miss out on those crazy deals. <laughs> uh, but we've got a great show for you today, showing you some of these awesome books uh, and a uh, little note, there is no DC on this one because of the way uh, the holiday falls on Monday. It throws their ordering off a little bit. So uh, no DC this week, but plenty of other things. Yeah, definitely. So let's get into it with our featured comics, starting out with one I'm very excited about. Destro number one. So this is the next... Uh, installment in the Energon universe. Cobra Commander just wrapped up this week. We know that we are getting a Scarlet miniseries soon. That one was already on FOC. And now we are looking ahead to Destro. This is written by Dan Waters. The art is by Andre Brisson. And we know that Destro runs Mars Industries, uh, who is the leader in providing high-tech weapons to the, to the world powers. However, this time it's a little bit different because the, <clears throat> the uh, emergence of Energon has changed everything. We're also going to see in this uh, the Crimson Twins, Tomax and Zamot. They are going to emerge to destroy Destro's competition. And Cobra Commander, who I guess maybe we'll see in this again based on how that series ended, uh, he's going to realize that his current ally, Destro, uh, could be his future greatest enemy. And that's something that's been uh, pervasive through all G.I. Joe media. You know, uh, Cobra Commander, Destro have a very... Um, you know, uneasy alliance, yeah. you know, they're, they they have a common enemy in G.I. Joe, but they don't re really like each other either. So hopefully we'll get to see a little bit of that. We've also seen some preview pages of this already. Uh, I want to say in the, I don't remember where it was. Maybe it was in Cobra Commander. It was in the uh, end of Cobra Commander number one. There's some preview pages showing all the bats yeah. and everything. So. Yeah, and it, it looks great. So uh, I have every faith in this book and it's going to be just as awesome as everything else we've gotten from the Energon universe so far. And then who knows what will happen after that. But it's going yeah. to be a fun ride. Uh, so we, we have our A cover right here. We have a blank variant. We have a Howard U anniversary variant. And this is a connecting cover with... What are the other books? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's all of the Energon Universe books will have, a, uh, have one of these. Okay. I think Scarlet had one too. Okay, right. And then there is a, uh, a Howard black and white. So it's the black and white version of that connecting cover. Next up, we've got our next installment in the X-Men Blood Hunt. Uh, they're doing a bunch of one-shots for the X-Men tying in. So this is X-Men Blood Hunt Magic number one. And like it says, this is going to focus on magic. This is by Ashley Allen and Jesus Erbes. And in this, we follow Ileana Rasputin post krakoan age, where uh, I, I think we're still figuring out what... what kind of ends everything. What kind of scatters all of the X-Men, yeah. all the mutants? <clears throat> but because of this, it sounds like uh, the Ileana is heading back to Russia, back to her hometown, uh, where she's going to kind of reflect and figure out what does it mean for her to be a mutant? What is her place in this new world? Uh, but, you know, it's Blood Hunt. The vampires attack even her small town because they're taking over the whole world, and it's up to her to defend it, which I think is going to be really, really cool uh, seeing her swinging her sword and and throwing some vampires into limbo or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, so very cool in here for one of my favorite X Men characters. So we've got our A cover right here. We have a Casa Grande Stormbreakers variant featuring characters that will probably not be. Yeah, I doubt this. we'll see Star and Ronan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have this uh, Talavera variant, which is really cool, and a Peach Momoko variant. Next is Kid Venom number one. So this is written and drawn by Taigami. And so we saw Kid Venom, I believe, first in some backup stories in the end of the Venomverse uh, miniseries. 
And then all of those backup stories with him were collected into a Kid Venom number zero. Well, this is Kid Venom number one. So this is all new stuff from Kid Venom that we haven't seen before. This is set in Japan in the year 977, so a way long time ago. Uh, in this one, Kid Venom, he's he has made his presence known to the evil symbiotes that are taking people and creatures hostage. Uh, and we've seen uh, we've seen that before. We saw a little bit of uh, we saw another you know symbiote from that from that era in that uh backup story from that other series but who else has their eye on kintaro which is uh, kid venom's real name uh, who else has their eye on him and his symbiote and it says that the world of kid venom will expand as new characters and dangers are revealed so we didn't get um a lot of information about him in that backup story i don't think we even saw like how he got this symbiote. He, like he was just there yeah and he was just doing cool stuff uh, but we don't. It wasn't really fleshed out, and that's what this series aims to do. So if you if you read that, and you liked it, or if you're into all the symbiote stuff and want more, uh, definitely check this out. He'll play a role in all the upcoming Venom stuff too, yeah. I believe. So this is a great way to learn more about him. So this is our A cover right here. We have a Gerardo Sandoval foil variant. Uh, there's an Inhuk Lee variant. There is a uh, John Tyler Christopher a negative space variant, and then there is a Philip Tan homage variant to. Uh, Venom Lethal Protector number one from yeah. the early 90s. This is very cool. Yeah. Okay, next up we have Star Wars Ahsoka number one. So this is going to be a mini series, much like how they did The Mandalorian and Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is going to be what I believe is each issue follows an episode of the series, like the Disney Plus uh, Ahsoka series. And so you can kind of get an idea uh, from that what you're going to be getting. I'm very excited to see how this is going to be interpreted. So this is by Rodney Barnes and the artist by Stephen Cummings. And, you know, we, this tells the story of Ahsoka, who is hunting down Thrawn and, you know, might also be able to get Ezra back, her old friend from Rebels. This includes a ton of Rebels characters. Or maybe she'll find something better than Ezra. Okay. A little 90s, 90s, 90s reference there, reference. you know. <laughs> uh, but if you know the series, you can kind of guess each issue uh, what first appearances we're going to get. So, you know, we're going to get uh, Balin Skull and Shin Haiti, who have at, to this point only appeared on uh, a variant cover. So this will be their first appearance. Uh, Hu Yang, all of that. So I'm very excited about this. I'm always interested to see what kind of art, artist uh, spin they give to it. So if you're a fan of the Ahsoka show, you want to revisit it in comic form, definitely check this one out. Plus, this has some great covers. So this is our A cover by David Nakayama. We have an Akka variant, which is super cool. We have an Annie Wu variant with Sabine. We have a Dursima variant. We have a John Tyler Christopher action figure oh, variant. I love those. We have a Ken Lashley foil variant. This seems like it's going to look super cool in foil. Especially if it's spot foil with maybe the laser blast and the <clears throat> lightsabers. Yeah. And then we have a Sprouse Phantom Menace 25th anniversary variant with Jabba. All right. So this is self-help number one. We actually talked about this two weeks back, but the FOC date got for this one got pushed back to this weekend. So we wanted to refresh your memory about this one. This is written by Jesse Kellerman and Owen King, and the art is by Mariana Ignazi. And it's described as a gleefully lurid pulp crime story which you know that sounds like a lot of fun in itself it's about a guy you see here on the cover his name's jerry hauser he is a down on his luck rideshare driver um every person he picks up in his uh in his car tells him how much he looks like this super successful self-help guru named darren hart which you can see him on the cover too and i guess they do they do look alike um, and it says, after a twist of fate, Jerry is given the chance of a lifetime, but if he's not careful, it may end his life as well. So I'm assuming, if I had to guess, maybe something happens to the self-help guru, and he gets to take his place, mm -hmm. and maybe it's one of those stories where he gets mixed up in crime or something like that. Maybe they think he that he's the other guy. realize that guy's life yeah. has some, some shady deal. Yeah, so it should be really interesting. Those, those are always really fun stories. So again, we just wanted to refresh your memory that this is has a new FOC date now. So we have our uh, A cover right here, and then we have a burn variant. Next up, we've got Giant Size Little Marvels number one. Uh, when we talked about this book on Wednesday, uh, we didn't have the finalized cover, but yeah. here's the finalized cover, which is super fun. This is by Scotty Young and Dax Gordine. And 
Not a whole lot of information about this, just the amazing, incredible, uncanny, fantastic heroes of the Marvel <laughs> Universe in pint-sized form find themselves on a giant-sized adventure. Now, these Scotty Young has done like the little Marvels in comics before. Okay. There's there was the A versus X during oh, the that's right, yeah. X-Men event. There, wasn't there the... Well, the X-Babies, I guess, is a little X bit babies different. X-Babies is a little different. But yeah, yeah that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So we are returning to that with a giant size little marvels, uh, which seems really fun. Just a one shot, but I, if they paid him enough money, I'm sure we could get this as an ongoing thing. Yeah, this would sell like crazy. Yeah, and it's great because you know we we said we wanted all the big marvels covers in a comic, and this is kind of sort of that. So yeah. thank you, Marvel, for listening to us specifically <laughs> and answering our prayers. So for all of those Scotty Young fans, do not miss out on this. And there's just the one cover. Next is Gatchaman number one. So uh, there was a Gatchaman uh, free comic book day book, and this is going to continue on the heels of that, written by Cullen Bunn, who I am loving going back through his Six Gun series right now. And then the art is by Chris Batista. Um, there is a mechanical terror from the international terrorist organization known as Galactor, who is also getting their own, I think, mini series, but I don't know that it's on FOC yet or. I don't think yet, but it's okay, coming. Okay, it's coming out. soon, yeah. I think it was on that schedule they had. That's right, that's right. Um, uh, well, uh, this organization has descended upon numerous cities around the world and is uh, stealing all of their greatest scientists. And the only hope is Science Ninja Team Gachamon, which is super fun to say. So, And that's pretty much it. That's all you really need, right? It's classic Gachamon. you got the, the, the classic team there. Uh, so we have our A cover right here. We have a Sanford Green connecting variant. Sanford Green coming off of that awesome Doom yeah. book a couple weeks ago. Uh, there's a Chris Batista variant. So that's your interior artist, which, yes, that looks fantastic. That looks like the show, but just in comic form. That could be like a Saturday morning variant, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there is a blank sketch variant on, of that as well. And then we also have a one-shot called uh, Gatchaman Ken Deathmatch. Uh, this is written by Tommy Lee Edwards. The art is by Mindy Lee. And in this one, they're going to have a series of one-shots, each one focusing on different members of the team. This is the first one of those focusing on Ken. And he goes under uh, undercover to infiltrate an, an underground gambling ring where martial artists from all over the world fight to the death. Sounds a little bit like blood sport, like the Kumite. Uh, and then the winners are brought to a secret Galactor recruiting base. So it sounds like he's going to try to infiltrate this as a way to get at Galactor. So um, if you... You know, if you're a fan of the Gatchaman, grab this, uh, grab the original book, or grab the ongoing book, grab <laughs> this book. They both come out on the same day, so you could have just a whole potpourri of Gatchaman books on June 26. Uh, but that should be really cool, too. So we have this A cover, and then we have another Chris Batista variant as well. That's very uh, uh, Breakfast Club. Get them while you can. <laughs> Gotta get them on all. <laughs> so next up, we have... Uh, what they call Spawn Misery, but the title on the cover is just Misery. And we talked about this a few weeks ago, but the FOC date changed for it. And this is our next mini series in the kind of new age of Spawn books. Uh, so this is going to be four issues by Todd McFarlane and Simon Kurdansky, a uh, team that worked on Spawn for a long time. Of course, Todd McFarlane, but Kurdansky was on Spawn for a while. And this actually follows Cyan, who has been part of the Spawn universe since the very beginning. Certainly. It is the daughter of Wanda and Al Simmons. Al Simmons, of course, being Spawn. And now uh, Cyan is older, and some powers have been kind of awakened in her, been uh, endowed upon her. Uh, but what are these powers? It says they help, uh, that help cut her off from those around her. So I don't know if they're kind of a mental thing she kind of goes into, but somehow it's kind of isolating a Cyan, uh, and her journey into darkness starts here. So if you've been a longtime Spawn fan, you'll definitely want to check up what's going on with Cyan in the Spawn universe that keeps expanding every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one sounds really fun. So there is a variant cover for this, the Todd McFarlane variant. It is not ready yet, so okay. we just have the A cover right here. Next up, we have other number ones because there's even more number ones coming oh, yeah. out. This is from the World of Minor Threats, Barfly number one. So this is written by Pat Oswalt, Kyle Starks, and Jordan Bloom, and the artist by Ryan Brown. This is a spinoff of their Minor Threat series. And this one is about a humanoid mutant fly uh, who has a very um, uncouth name in the, in the uh, solicitation. So I won't say it here so that we don't get, uh, you know, 
band or whatever. Uh, but uh, he is a lifelong minion who lives to serve his criminal master. But what happens when he no longer has anyone left to hench for? He's a henchman without a hench... Hencher. A hencher, <laughs> right. Uh, I, and like you said on Wednesday, he just hangs out in a bar, I guess. So I don't really know. Um, I've not read Minor Threats, but I know that it's uh, supposed to be really fun. Uh, so if you're a fan of that, uh, don't miss this spinoff. We have this uh, A cover right here. We have a Ryan Brown variant, which <laughs> that's great. Uh, and then there is a, a Morazzo variant. I like the head-to-body ratio. Right, yeah. Next up, we have Grendel Devil's Crucible Defiance. Uh, long title for this, but it is the return of long dark horse uh, hero slash criminal uh, Grendel by its original creator, Matt Wagner. So Grendel returns in this one. It's Grendel Prime because there's been a couple of different Grendels. And uh, Grendel has, Prime has returned to Earth, but a lot has changed. Now ruled by Necro Lords, Grendel will have to hide his identity as he explores his now hostile home planet. So if you are a Grendel fan, you don't get too much Grendel stuff. Yeah. Maybe a mini series every few years, but this is your next one and it looks great. So this is our A cover. And we have a variant by Brennan Wagner. This is oops, sorry. Um, Paranoid Gardens number one. So this is written by co-written by Gerard Way and then Son Scheiman and the art of Chris Weston. This is described as ER meets Doctor Who on acid. And there's a lot going on in, the, in this solicitation, so I'll, I'll try, do my best to sum it up for you. It's about a woman, uh, you can see her on the cover, her name is Lou. She's a nurse at the most bizarre care center in the universe. Uh, the staff there is not entirely human. The cases are unearthly. There's aliens and ghosts and superheroes and more that plague the hallway. So just think of like the craziest hospital you can think of. Um, well, Lou, while she's there, she believes that she has been given some kind of higher calling in this mysterious place. And she decides that she's going to rise to the challenge. But in, in order to rise to that challenge, she's going to have to fight through um, corrupt staff members, powerful theme park cults, which, you know, I don't know if they worship like roller coasters or whatever, uh, and her own personal demons and trauma in order to, like I said, in order to meet the challenge that she feels like that she has been given. So that sounds bizarre. I'm sure we'll check this one out uh, when it comes out, but uh, you just see what it's all about. But it sounds like a lot of fun, too. It sounds like a lot of opportunities for being just like creative imagery and that yeah. kind of stuff. So we have our A cover right here, and then we have a Moto Hero variant. So yeah, there you go, right the creative there. Creative imagery at <laughs> its finest. Yep. Okay, next up we have Ninjak versus Roku, uh, number one. This is by AJ Empadu and em Emiliano Correra. And it's a return for Ninjak. Now, the, the Valiant characters, have they're under the Alien Books umbrella. We're seeing a lot of these characters come back. And in this one, uh, they've been uh, friends and foes, uh, Ninjak and Roku. But in this one, the two will clash in a battle. It's a, the weirdest sentence. They say, in a battle that will redefine the very essence of danger. <laughs> The ethereal concept of danger. They are going mm. to redefine it. So okay. whatever that means, uh, as they both vie for the same coveted prize. So I love Ninjak, one of my favorite Valiant characters, along with like Exo, yeah, Bloodshot. I like Ninjak. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, he's just a cool super secret spy ninja. Yeah. Uh, so if you've never read some Ninjak or you're a longtime fan, you'll want to check this one out. I really thought this was Ninjak just trying to figure out how to get his media streaming box on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. And he's versus versus his Roku. Yeah. Well, he's he's a little technology. That's true. Yeah. Uh, right now. He's rich, right? So he can pay somebody. To yeah. Do yeah. And we also have this very cover. This is the Wilsmer variant. Which uh, Roku has crazy like Medusa like Medusa like hair, right? Yeah. Next up, we have notable twos and threes continuations of series that have already started or are about to start. We need to remind you, hey, you need to subscribe Get to these. these. Yeah. Red coat number three. Red coat number one, red coat number two were awesome, and now we get the third one. However, I will say that there is no information about this issue specifically in the solicitations. It just tells us that, hey, he's being chased by these weird guys, and he befriends Einstein. Well, we already saw that. So as for information about what happens in this issue specifically, I have no idea. It almost doesn't matter because the first two issues are so great, and I really want to continue on with his adventures. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to let you know that number three is on pre-order this weekend. Uh, so we have our uh, A cover right here, and there is an Ashar and Wilson variant as well. 
Yeah, we know from the last one that he ran into another immortal. That's right. Uh, that you may know from history. That's and right. It seems like going to be a very fun adventure. Yeah. Next up, we've got Midnight Suns Blood Hunt number two. We are going to be talking about Midnight Suns Blood Hunt number one on Monday because it comes out next week. So we'll have a little bit better idea of what's going on here, uh, what brings the Midnight Suns back together. And it says you got two Ghost Riders, a Daywalker, mm -hmm. and more reunited to face a world overrun by vampires. Uh, I'm really interested to see, is Blade joining this group? Because I have a lot of questions if that's the case. Well, I think the solicitation for the first issue said they have to face off against Blade. And yeah. at the time, before Blood Hell, we were like, why are they fighting Blade? Well, now we know, yeah. but, you know. Uh, but also, it looks like maybe getting Johnny Blaze and Danny Catch in oh, this one. Oh, please, please, please. Uh, so, very excited to check this one out. I've got it, the number one sitting right next to me. So uh, we will be reporting on that yep. soon. But if it sounds like something you'll like, definitely go ahead and pre-order it. We've got our A cover here. We have a Declan Shalvey variant. And the huh. Scotty Young Big Marvel variant with the the man himself. He, he that, may be doing some shady stuff, but he looks so cute right there. You cannot you can't you can't he, help but love him. him. Yep. All right, so this is Helverine number two. This is another one where the first issue was not out yet. comes out next week. We'll be talking about it on Monday. This is the second issue, though, and we are told that Project Hellfire has unleashed their Hellfire-fueled war. There was, uh, you could make a drinking game out of how many times it said Hellfire <laughs> in the solicitations. Um, but yeah, they have a group of their own uh, warriors powered up by Hellfire, and Helverine comes into conflict with them, but will Logan be able to quell their violent mission? So I'm wondering, if, they mentioned Logan specifically, so I'm wondering if it's a thing where, like, you know, Ghost Rider can turn back into Johnny Blaze or Danny Ketch, and, and so I wonder if Wolverine can do this, or Logan can do the same thing, where he, you know, puts the demon away and then it comes back out. We will know more about that on Monday. But uh, this is our A cover right here. We have a Casa Grande Stormbreakers variant, and then there is a Tony Daniel variant. That one looks great. Yeah. Next up, we've got Spider-Man Ghost Spider number two. I love number one of this book. I thought it was so much fun yep. now that Gwen is in the 616 universe. But it's not all fun and games because she can't reveal to any of the people she knows there that she is now in their universe. She can't be a hero. She can't do any of that. Can't even put on her costume. And in this one, Gwen is reunited with Peter, Miles, and Cindy Moon. But it's not a friendly neighborhood welcome. Plus, why are so many classic Spider-Man villains hunting down Gwen? Uh, we'll have to find out. But I'm very excited about this. It's one of my favorite Marvel characters. And it, off to a great start. Yeah. So we've got this amazing Mark Brooks A cover. We have a Megan Hetrick variant, which I love this. I love when they do like the little like collage yeah. of the character's life around him. Uh, we've got this Via Lobos variant. And we have a Stephanie Hans black costume variant, which is funny because Gwen does have a black costume because she has Gwenum. Yeah. But this is like, but what if it wasn't Gwenum? It went a different direction. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to be getting a lot of these. For covers. sure. Union Jack the Ripper, Blood Hunt number two. The first issue came out this week. Um, and it's just kind of, um, you know, telling, hey, what's going on uh, in other parts of the world over in the United Kingdom? What's What are they doing over there with all this vampire craziness? Um, and this one, is, it just asks, who is the hunger? We don't really know. But what ally of Union Jack has fallen prey to his wicked ways? And I believe we know the answer to that based on what we saw in the first issue of this as well. So just want to let you know, I think this is going to be three issues um, all, not all of the tie-ins are the same number of issues. I think this one's three, though, and this is the, the middle issue of that. So we have our A cover right here, and then we have a really cool Philip Tan variant. Sounds like it's like he's stabbing something <laughs> above him, and all the blood's coming out. Like up. a big dragon yeah. or something. Okay, next up we've got Star Wars Darth Maul Black, White, and Red number three. Issue number one has already come out. It was great. Issue number two comes out next week, which I'll be going over on the show on Monday. But it's already time to place your orders for issue number three. This issue is going to be by Erica Schultz and art by Leonard Kirk. And in this, uh, which it's funny, a lot of these issues, not that they sound the same, but theme-wise are very similar. It's kind of about the uh, Maul's wrestling between him and his master and all of that because in this one maul is a loyal follower of the sith but a mission to a remote moon may change his mind and start a crisis between him and his master darth sidious 
So a lot of tension between those two and these series are definitely bringing it to light. So very excited about this one. Uh, I just more of these, please. Uh, we've got this A cover here. We also have a John Romita Jr. variant mm. and a, a Sakura variant as well. This is X Men: Air of Apocalypse number two. Has the first one come out? Nope. Is that next week? Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I got a little bit more, a bit a little bit longer to wait for the first issue of this, but this is the second issue. The Apocalypse. Uh, has seen great potential in 12 hand-picked mutants. That's sort of the crux of the entire series. However, in this one, a 13th contender shows up to crash the tournament that he's holding, and they're going to endanger the lives of thousands in the process. And will anyone survive to carry on Apocalypse's footsteps? Because that's what he's trying to find, right? He's trying to find a successor to his legacy, I guess. Um, but Mr. Sinister is going to kind of, you know, throw his weight in there, too. So we'll have to see what role he's going to play in this. And do not confuse this series with X-Men Hair of Apocalypse. I was going to make that joke. Oh, Apocalypse man. has to find a toupee. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, he just goes, like, shopping for wigs. He's, yeah. He doesn't want to be bald anymore. Sorry, I didn't mean to ruin it for you. Oh, I, I was spending your entire <laughs> time talking about that, thinking about X-Men Hair of Apocalypse. <laughs> well, sorry. Uh, <laughs> we have this A cover right here, and then we have a Daikru A cover as well. Once again, with this series, too, why is... Mr. Sinister there. Why have they not wiped Mr. Sinister off yep. the planet after all of the things that happened in current X-Men? Yep. They've got some explaining to yep. do. Next up, we got cool covers. Uh, really cool covers with cool books on the inside of them, but <laughs> focusing on the covers. But with uh, this one, I want to talk about the book yeah. as well. So uh, this is Ultimate Black Panther number five. So we just got number four this week. Very interesting issue. Uh, I mean, this is... a. Uh, I don't want to say slow burn because a lot has happened, but the 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 pieces are still coming together to build a full picture of what's going on here. Uh, in this one, T'Challa, Storm, and Killmonger return to Wakanda, uh, but what will be waiting for them? There is the Dora Milaje, and I can't remember what are the magic. Dora I don't know. Milaje. It's like the Bene Gesserit from Dune, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they seem like they're pulling a little bit more weight than they're supposed to. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've got their prophecies and all of that. And it says Black Panther will must go on a spiritual journey. So I wonder if he's going to do that kind of ancestral, the that plane with all the other yeah, previous Black Panthers, all yeah. that. Uh, very excited about that. And a little, I don't know if it's related, but I noticed the, the kind of... Uh, the, the um, oh, I must remember what they were called, but the kind of soothsayer people, the way they have their mask looks pseudo like the maker. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Like the one dot, yeah. like representing the eye. I do think there's something, there's something more going on with them. Like T'Challa is, he's relying on them a little bit too much. They actually do kind of feel like the Bene Gesserit from doing, like they're in the shadows, they're manipulating things without being overt about yeah. it, you know? So I just feel like there's more to come with them. Because we haven't seen them before, right? Like, they, do they have we seen them in 616? I don't think so. I think they're so it's like a, for this. So unless we're mistaken, it's like a new element to the Black Panther mythos that I think is wildly interesting. And I feel like there's more to come They've with them. They've definitely been building them up as kind of unreliable, like, a, a X factor in this Yeah, for thing. sure. So very excited about this one. All the ultimate stuff. Uh, and I like that we kind of have an ultimate book coming out almost every week yeah. and a pre-order for one almost every week. So this is our A cover for that. There's a Boss Logic Ultimate Special variant. And this one's really cool. This is the Clayton Crane Ooh, variant. That's a good one. Black Panther and Killmonger. This is Spectacular Spider-Man number four. This is my favorite 616 Spider-Man book on the stands right now. Um, and in this one, uh, the world comes crashing down around Peter and Miles. And I'm wondering if that means... The world that we saw, that not not literally a world, but the world that they think they're in, in issue number yeah. three, um, someone has just ticked off the wrong Spider-Man, but the gloves have come off and people are going to get hurt, is what it says. And so I don't know if who's going to do the hurting and who's going to be the hurt hurties. Hurties. <laughs> but uh, it should be great. I, you know, the, the art in this one's great. I'm loving the story, the fun behind it, the action, all of it. This is wonderful. Uh, so we have our A cover right here. We have an Ethan Young homage variant to shoot... Do you know that one? I was I was gonna ask if you know what. Oh, it looks it's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't. Let us know if you can think of that. Ah, I can't remember. And then there's a Francesco Mobley variant. That one's great. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, next up huh. we've got a whole bunch of big Marvel variants for you. 
uh, a lot are releasing this week. Uh, not too much information about the ones on the inside, but you know, you got to check these out. Yeah, so we've got the Scotty Young variant for Black Widow and Hawkeye number four. We've got one for Daredevil number 10. I love this. Mm-hmm. It's like a very bug eye. Right. Uh, we've got one for Jack, <laughs> Jackpot and Black Cat number four. That, that's the power that she rolled is she like she beat herself, you know? <laughs> I would love to see that yeah. uh, story. We have one for X-Men 97. Nice. Storm. That one's really nice. And we have Vengeance of Moon Knight, which looks like he is jumping off a diving board. Yeah, and he's just he doesn't have a face. It's, it's just, just it's just it's actually it looks like one big eyeball, and that's the pupil yeah. that you see right there. That's great. All right, so this is Feral number four. Sorry, I didn't have my notes ready. Um this one, I can't wait for this one. This is a great series. The world comes... Cr- I'm sorry, that was the wrong note. Uh, the indoor cats. We know that they've been uh, trying to get home this whole series so far, and they finally do get home uh, in this issue, but so do their secrets. And after surviving the rabies-infested forest that we've seen them do for the last three issues, can the cats survive each other? We know there's a little bit of tension in the group right now. This based- indoor-outdoor cat rivalry. Yeah, that's right. Place. Yeah, it's like it's like East Coast, West Coast <laughs> hip-hop. Uh, and then who... Or, I'm sorry, what is lurking in the basement? Oh, God. That comes out of Just nowhere. Just they thought that I know, everything right? was fine. It's probably a, a crazy raccoon. What if it's what if but what if it's like their owners who have gone feral oh. and but there's like stuck in the basement or maybe one of them locked the other one in the basement because they saw I don't know there's no telling there hasn't been any mention of basements before so we'll have to see if there's a new element added to this uh, but we have our A cover right here and then we have a B cover also by Forstner and Fleeks oh that's the um, 28 is it days or weeks later I can't I think remember it's 28 days later yeah I'm pretty sure. Both great movies. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got G.I. Joe Real American Hero number 307. It's a great cover. Uh, plus, this sounds like a lot uh, is coming to a head that's been going on this with all the different factions going yeah. against each other. Because this one says the Joes must face Serpentor on two fronts, Cobra Island and Springfield. But Destro has his own plans. Uh, so I'm excited to see. There's been a lot of kind of um, stealthily checking out the different you know, uh, uh, Cobra Commanders people went over here to check this out yeah. and they've been scouting out and all that kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's a lot of... <clears throat> Recon. It's, yeah, and it's a lot of we know what they know, but we know that they know that we know, but we know they know, we know they yeah. know. You know, it's a, it's a lot of that kind of stuff so far. It's about time to just open the, the doors. Yeah, and just let everybody... Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> uh, so we've got our A cover right here and there is a variant that is the black and white version of that yeah. as well. Next up, we've got graphic novels and more. Not too many, just without DC. Uh, definitely a smaller batch of books, yep. but still some great ones. This is The Punisher Max by uh, Jason Aaron and Steve Dillon Omnibus. This is going to be $100, and it collects the 22-issue... I think it was just 22 issues. I might be wrong, but it collects issues 1 through 22 of the Punisher Max series from 2009, plus the Punisher Max Christmas special, which I haven't read that, but I love the thought of Punisher Max doing a Christmas special. Like, I want to go read that. So this should be really fun for you Punisher fans out there. Yeah, because there was the the Garth Ennis right. Punisher Max, and then Jason Aaron took it yeah. over after that. Um, yeah, so we have this uh, d- uh, uh, standard edition cover, and then there is a direct market variant as well with Steve Dillon. On yeah. Next up, we've got a new facsimile. This is Deadpool number one, the facsimile. So this was the uh, big issue by Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis. And a defining part of the character. This is where modern Deadpool definitely comes into play. Uh, you got his look and a little bit of personality with New Mutants 98. <laughs> yeah. But this is this ongoing series. Uh, what kicked off the ongoing series is where you get very uh, uh, wisecrack in Deadpool. So with all the ads, all of that, check out this facsimile. And next we have some reprints of Ultimate X-Men. So this is Ultimate X-Men number two, the second printing. And then we also have the Ultimate X-Men number three, second printing. And there's been a lot of talk about this because um, of that character on the cover in the blue shooting beams Maybe out of her eyes. Beams? Yeah, and I, I can't remember her name, but her name in Japanese means summer. Interesting. Uh, it's like it's like Natsu or Natsuri or something like yeah. that. Uh, I don't remember the name, but yeah, it, it translates to summer. 
And so maybe that's the ultimate version of Cyclops. I don't know. Don't quote us on that. Just a little bit of a speculation. Uh, that character, I don't remember if they're in the background of number three. I'm but not, I don't remember. We don't see anybody shooting eye beams in number three. So this is just maybe a little bit of a preview, what, like a foreshadowing variant. Uh, and then we have the Ultimates number one, second printing. But it hasn't even come out yet. Yeah. So, and there's and already... It's, and it's not this coming week. So. Right. So... You still got a little ways. Yeah, we still have. Eight, I don't remember. It's June sometimes, so there's still at least a couple weeks until we get the Ultimates number one. But it's already at a second printing. So if you did not pre-order the first time and you're worried that you'll miss it, you can pre-order this one, and uh, you'll get it when it comes out near the end of June. And yeah. And next up, I've got X Men '97 number one third printing. This is the Marvel Animation variant, which I love these. Uh, all the pictures they have around the X Mansion. This is like one of those. I love when they had the um, X Factor yes. team on mm -hmm. the wall and everything. Uh, so if you've still missed out on X Men '97, the prequel series, this is another chance to get the number one. And that is it for comics from the future. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to head over to infinityflux.net right now where you can pre-order these books we just talked about so you don't miss out when they come to the store and there's none left for you. Sorry. Them's the break. Yep, yeah, sorry. Uh, so that is it for this week. Definitely stay tuned for our show coming up on Monday. We'll be going over this Big old, Big old stack, stack of, of books, books. <laughs> uh, that I've got over here that we're going to be going over and reviewing for our Monday show. So come back then. Uh, remember to subscribe, give us a like, all that good stuff. And what 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 emoji? I, I was looking at like the the list here. Like you know, Destro he has a metal face. I don't think there's a metal face. Is there emoji. not a is there not a metal face guy in? Uh... uh, nope, no metal face guy. Uh. There's uh, Blood Hunt Magic or Kid Venom or Ahsoka. Uh, give us something that you try to try to put something on there and we can guess which book you're most excited That's about. That's right. Yeah. Only using emojis. That's right. Uh, so <laughs> until next time, thank you so much for watching and see, see ya. ya.